Outside the line starts right now. There was a basketball team in Seattle once. They left. Doing a reverse Grapes of Wrath, the Sonics abandoned the West Coast for Oklahoma and became the Thunder. In Sacramento, they have a team. The owners decided to sell, and now some fairly wealthy people in Seattle are ready to bring the Kings there, while Sacramento officials scrambled to find their own fairly wealthy people to keep the team put. The point man for that scramble has some experience at the position. Former All-Star Kevin Johnson, point guard, is now the Honorable Kevin Johnson, mayor of Sacramento. He's lobbying to keep his hometown in the big leagues. I will tell you, the eyes of the NBA are watching us. We're the only team not in the playoffs that people are watching as if we are in the playoffs. This was our playoffs. In Anaheim, we won. Seattle and Sacramento make their pitches. A franchise hangs in the balance, and Kevin Johnson's here to talk about it. Today's Outside the Lines. Sitting in for Bob Lee, T.J. Quinn. Ask fans of the Brooklyn Dodgers, the New York baseball giants, the Baltimore Colts, the Boston Braves, the Milwaukee Braves, the Philadelphia A's, the Kansas City A's, the Oakland Raiders, the Los Angeles Raiders, they can all tell you. A team is a civic trust until the day it packs up, forwards its mail, and then it's a business. In Seattle, they learned the lesson five years ago when the Sonics went to Oklahoma City. And in Sacramento, they're learning it now. The current owners, the Maloofs, have an agreement to sell the Kings to a Seattle group, while Sacramento officials are trying to gather investors for a bid led by NBA All-Star turned mayor Kevin Johnson. The NBA's Board of Governors is expected to vote April 18th. Whatever criteria the board uses, it won't be sentiment, as Commissioner David Stern said last week in a press conference. So is this strictly about the arena deal, in your mind, that makes it's, Seattle so attractive? This is strictly about what the owners decide. There's a great and strong application from a terrific city uh, to bring in a third and possibly a fourth team in a brand new building, well-financed ownership group, uh, without the ability yet to build because there are several things that have to be overcome, but that's, that's really good. And so if you're a commissioner, you like that. But the way that move was handled five years ago to Oklahoma City, does that impact what you're doing now with Seattle and Sacramento? Not at all. Do you see any scenario where both cities are happy here? I don't see any, <clears throat> excuse me, scenario where both cities are happy. And I wouldn't presume to, uh, through the media, tell Sacramento what it has to do. They've, we have, they have an open door at the NBA, as does the Seattle application, and we have had ongoing communications with both uh, cities and their potential groups. I'm just wondering if it looks like there's going to be two viable markets in Sacramento and Seattle, if expansion would ever be considered. You know, I'm going to leave three envelopes for the next commissioner <laughs> and let him decide how that gets answered. We have a chance to solidify this is the permanent residence of the Sacramento Kings organization. They'd be the first franchise in the history of any sport to move four times. We want this to be their resting place. So let's bring in Kevin Johnson now. You know him as a three-time NBA All-Star and now the mayor of his hometown, Sacramento. Kevin, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, let me ask you, from the start, what is the value of this team to your town? <laughs> You know, Sacramento has a love affair with this basketball team for nearly three decades. Uh, it's about civic pride. It's, a, it's about our identity as a community that's beyond being the state capital of California. Um, our fans have been some of the best fans. We had, have had some of the record uh, leading attendance in all of the NBA over a 27, 28 year period. It's the fabric of our community. It means everything to us. and. Uh, where I think Sacramento epitomizes what a one-team market is all about. And uh, it's very similar to the Green Bay Packers, where you, know, you have a smaller market, you have one professional team, and the whole community rallies around that team. Uh, Sacramento is, is very similar to Green Bay in that respect. Yeah, for years, your team was out drawing. I keep saying your team. is Obviously, you're just the mayor of the city. You're not the owner. Uh, but for years, the Sacramento Kings were out drawing the Seattle Supersonics in attendance. Uh, since they went to Oklahoma City, things have changed. Over the last five years, Kings' attendance has been way down. What do you think has happened 
uh, with attendance and what makes you think that the team can turn that around and, and have a stronger representation? You know, I've seen firsthand as a player in Phoenix and uh, certainly if you think about Oklahoma City, what has occurred there, um, when you have a team and an ownership that's really committed in a community, what they can do together is amazing and I think that's what's happened in Sacramento. When you think about our market, over a 27 year period, we've sold out 19 times. Uh, and in those 19 seasons that we've sold out, only 10 of them did we make a playoff. So we have record numbers in attendance. We have some of the best fans in, the all, in all of the NBA. And that is something that is really clear. Over the last four or five years, there's been a decline in terms of the product that we put on the court. Uh, the fans have felt an uncertainty, not knowing whether the team was going to be in Sacramento or not in Sacramento. And then certainly the fans have had a, a difficult relationship with the Maloofs over the last couple of years. But in generally speaking, I think those are the three reasons why attendance has dipped. If you have a committed ownership group with our community, I will guarantee you, you will see record number in attendance and some of the best fans uh, in this league. You know, in Seattle, it seems like there's this growing sense that this, the move there is all but a done deal. Why do you think it isn't? Well, I, I can assure you and the Seattle fans, it is not a done deal. Um, we've laid out a, a three-part strategy. We call it plan to win. The first part is to surface and identify an ownership group, uh, an ownership group that will consist of local owners, local people in our community. We don't want absent owners. Uh, I had a goal of raising, uh, getting three to five people to come up with a million dollars just to start. I ended up getting 25 people locally to c come up with a million dollars. Uh, so that's $25 million. And we're partnering the local community with equity investors, those who have credibility, big dollars. They've been referred to as the whales. Uh, we'll be unveiling who they are this week or next week to meet the March 1st deadline. So that's kind of the first strategy, an ownership group that will put forward a competitive and fair offer uh, compared to what has been presented in Seattle. The second part of that strategy is we as a community are going to deliver a brand new downtown arena. And we believe very strongly that's a competitive advantage. Our city voted in a resolution this week, 7-2 uh, to two to move forward. Uh, essentially, we're going to commit a significant uh, public investment of about 200 to $250 million to build that arena. Uh, again, we know that's a competitive advantage. It will go downtown. It will create jobs. And then lastly, our market, and that's what you alluded to early. Um, Sacramento market in terms of viability and strength uh, is second to none in terms of a small, mid-sized market. As you said earlier in the show, we've outdrawn uh, the folks in Seattle when, when a team was there and we believe very strongly because we're a top 20 TV market, um, the NBA has 100% of the market share and our proven attendance from our fans is something that is, it has been unmatched and unparalleled throughout the NBA. So those are our three important reasons. Uh, this is a shot that we're going to take and we're not going to miss. We're going to keep our team in Sacramento. I mean, obviously the only audience that really matters in this is the NBA's Board of Governors. They're going to be deciding probably on April 18th. You were in Houston during the All-Star break uh, lobbying, as you have done before. What kind of questions do owners ask you? Lobbying is an understatement. I had a sign that said, I will work for my team instead I will work for food. I was, doing every, I was talking to anybody that would listen. And what was amazing about Houston, uh, I've been to three All-Star games over the last three years. Uh, in L.A. a couple years ago was the first time we heard that our team might go to Anaheim. Uh, last year we were putting a financing a deal together to keep our team for a new arena. We did that. The deal ended up falling apart. And this year is, I believe, the final act. Uh, everybody I talked to in, in Houston, they're all supportive of Sacramento. Nobody wants to see a team leave from one market to another market. When I've talked to owners publicly and privately, they're just saying, you know, regardless of what happens, we're rooting for you in Sacramento to keep a team. We're hoping that you can do the three things that you said that you can do. And if you do that, you're going to give yourselves a really good chance. The fans from other cities that would come up to me, they're saying, KJ, we, we appreciated, appreciated you as a, as a player. We probably didn't root for you because you were playing against our team, but we're certainly rooting for you to keep your team in Sacramento. And it would be unprecedented. Never in the history of the NBA have you moved a team out of one city to another when you've had a corporate participation, when you've had its, the fan support that we've had, and when you have a significant investment to do a brand new arena downtown. It has not happened, and we don't want to see it happen uh, this time either. Okay, that is the Honorable Kevin Johnson. He's going to be a busy man for the next eight weeks. Kevin, thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me, TJ.
And Mayor Johnson is hardly the only person who's going to be paying attention to this. Let's bring in Kevin Phippen. He's a social media editor for Sacktown Royalty. He's a Sacramento guy. Jason Reed is a filmmaker who produced and directed Sonic Skate, Requiem for a Team. It was a 2009 documentary about the team's move to Oklahoma City, and of course he is a Seattle guy. And Chris Daniels is a reporter for KING-TV in Seattle. You saw him interviewing David Stern earlier in the show. Chris, I want to start with you. Uh, David Stern made it clear that sentiment is not going to be a factor in this decision. What are the economics at play? Well, frankly, TJ, this is a big business deal. Commissioner Stern said last week this would not be about economics, but indeed it is. The purchase by Chris Hansen, the signed document he has right now for the Kings franchise, according to Forbes, has already helped to raise the value of all the NBA franchises by roughly 30 percent. The NBA owners are going to look at that, look at the overall valuation of the league and think this potentially could be a good deal for them. I mean, you look at the city of Seattle versus Sacramento. Sacramento finds itself a lot like Seattle did just a few years ago before the Sonics left, an aging arena, an owner who has clearly ticked off the fan base. Both cities can feel the same way about their ownership group during a time like this. But Seattle right now has seen a bit of an economic growth. There are eight Fortune 500 companies plus Boeing, which is based back in Chicago. Sacramento has none. And when you look at some of these numbers and the economic breakdown, uh, you would seem to think that the NBA owners would look at Seattle more favorably than Sacramento, just based on pure economics. Uh, Jason, uh, let me ask you about the, the sentiment side of it. Uh, when that, when your team was finally, when you finally got the word anyway, they were going to leave town. What was that like as a fan? I mean, you know, it was a pretty devastating moment. We had hoped, just as the fans in Sacramento uh, do, that our mayor, Greg Nichols, would, uh, you know, hold the team to their lease and, and wait out the judge's uh, settlement, you know, the judge's announcement. And unfortunately, our mayor, in a last minute uh, kind of cowardly move, uh, agreed to allow the team to leave. Uh, that was a devastating moment. I think we all had hope up until that last minute, despite the writing being on the wall all the way back since 2006 when Howard Schultz sold the team to Clay Bennett. But you can't take away, yeah, I mean, it was just a horrible, horrible feeling to know that the team was gone. They were going to be playing in Oklahoma next year. And we only wish that we had, you know, a mayor like KJ who would have kind of stood by his guns. Uh, and, and unfortunately, Mayor Nichols didn't. And that's a big reason why the team is gone now. So, Jason, how do you feel about the idea of the Kings relocating to Seattle? Well, I mean, there's not really a playbook on how, as a fan, you're supposed to deal with this, you know? I mean, I think everyone in Seattle uh, wants the NBA back. I mean, that's been our whole reason with Sonicsgate to work for the last six years between saving the team and then trying to rally the troops both locally and nationally to bring the team back. But I think, you know, throughout this process, you know, kind of the, the curtain's been pulled away on the business of the NBA for us. And... I think we're a lot more realistic and a le less idealistic than we were when we were trying to save the team. You know, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, learning that Santa Claus doesn't exist for the first time. Uh, you know, we aren't going to abandon Christmas just because we are devastated to learn Santa Claus doesn't exist. And, you know, we've supported the NBA for this whole time that we haven't had a team. And we'll continue to do so if this situation doesn't work out. All we can do here is do what we are doing locally, which is support the Chris Hansen Arena deal, rally behind uh, that deal, which we've done, and also just let the nation know that we won't be silenced until the NBA returns to Seattle, whether it's uh, Sacramento relocating here or if it's down the road. We're going to we'll continue to cheer for our Sonics despite not having a team. Kevin, what would it mean to Sacramento if the Kings actually left? It would be terrible. Um, it would be devastating to the economy. There's a huge fan base, uh, I would say unrivaled, um, with regards to their passion and commitment to the team. Um, Mayor Johnson said it earlier, uh, we sold out 19 of 27 seasons here. Uh, this city loves this team, and that's despite all of the things that have gone down over the recent years. So with that um, relationship between the team and the city, though, why has attendance dropped the way it has the last five years? You have to look at what's actually gone down. Um, our ownership team has tried to move this team, and they've, they've been trying for several years, despite um, the passion that this, that this city has for the team. 
um, th there's no there's no city in America that would still be supporting the team to the extent that we are and still fighting to save it, um, given what's gone down. Uh, Chris, talking about what's uh, what, what's going down, uh, Kevin Johnson was saying that this is far from a done deal. Uh, we've gotten a sense, those of us uh, far away from Seattle, that the idea is sinking in, that Seattle's feeling pretty confident. What is the feeling in town about the team coming? Well, the city and the county councils and the executive and the mayor here have already passed an arena plan that is contingent on an environmental review uh, being processed by the, the city and the county here. There is a lawsuit scheduled to be heard tomorrow involving the Longshoremen's Union who has issues with transportation in the area where this arena would be built as well as the environmental analysis. They believe that the county and the city are violating the law. But the reason why the, the city and the county are, are backing this at this point is this is really an unprecedented deal for the city of Seattle in terms of the amount of private money that would be involved with the sports complex. We're talking about a $490 million arena plan. The way everything settled out after it passed through various stages of the city and county is there would be money that would be used from the, the public financing for transportation and also renovation of Key Arena, which is where the Sonics used to play more than five years ago now and, and with that breakdown it means that there could be close to 400 million dollars in private money just put into that arena and when you talk about the, the purchase of the team on top of that we're looking at three quarters of a billion dollars in private financing by the Hanson Balmer group and that's before we even get to an NHL franchise so Based on that, that's why a lot of people here are so optimistic about this particular group and believe that they have the deep pockets that the NBA wants. Jason, uh, with the, uh, the sudden maturation on business matters that you said people in Seattle had to go through, uh, if there had been a significant need for public money for this deal to happen, do you think there would have been support for it? I think it would have been much more difficult. You know, I think the city of Seattle and the people here kind of took a stand and said, you know, we paid for CenturyLink Field for the Seahawks. We've paid for Safeco Field for the Mariners. Uh, we don't want an arena deal that's going to rely heavily on, you know, public subsidies from the taxpayers. And that's what's so unique about Chris Hansen's plan. He's kind of shattering the sports industrial complex that relies on public su subsidies by coming forth with so much private money. And because of that, it's made it much easier for both the King County Council and the City Council, as well as the mayor and the King County Executive, to get behind his plan because it's such a good deal. It's really hard to turn down the kind of investment that Chris is talking about, this you know, three quarters of a billion dollars that's going to be coming to the city. It's going to create construction for jobs. It's going to create jobs at the arena. It's going to bring back our civic pride from losing the team. And I think that that's what's so smart about Chris Hansen is he thought all this through. He knew the political environment here. And he said, I'm going to come about this in a different way. And ultimately, we kind of see this as solving this problem of you know teams relocating despite him having to relocate a team. It's like if there's an owner comes and wants to invest in the community on the level he is, then that's going to really help ensure the team's going to stay there because he's going at it with altruistic reasons. And so I think it kind of, you know, shatters that old model. And, and I think that, you know, if Sacramento could come up with a plan like this, they'd be re relying less on the taxpayer dollars if they can find the, the right owner to come up with a plan where it's mostly uh, privately funded. Kevin, you're hearing this from a, a fan in Seattle who talks about the pain of going through that, that loss, just like people in Baltimore, people in New York, all over the country have gone through. What do you want to say to Jason and to people in Seattle about the idea of taking your team? You know, I, I, I can understand that um, it's, it's hard to, to fathom, um, you know, another city having to go through what, what your city went through, and at the same time you have mixed emotions and, and you, you just want an NBA team back. Um, we can understand that, that you're not dancing in the streets about the idea. The, what I would say is that, and, and more to Jason's point about the, 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 the public versus private dollars, the, the NBA has made a living off of partnering with the cities that they, they're housed in. And Sacramento has done everything it's been asked to to create that partnership. And we have a large public subsidy in California, which is, you know, notorious for turning down large public subsidies. Like Kevin Johnson said before, it would be unprecedented for a team to move, given the large public subsidy we're offering, 
an, a viable ownership team that KJ is going to announce soon. And I, I just don't understand how the NBA could turn around and say, okay, well, I'm glad that that money's there. And there's probably an expiration on it that has a very short time span, despite the fact that, you know, we're doing all this. Jason, uh, you talked about the fact that there really was no playbook for you. Uh, you've got some experience now. What advice do you have for Kevin? What's a fan's guide to surviving uh, your team on the chopping block? Well, I, I would say that, you know, I think it's always just good to keep up the hope and keep up the faith. What uh, Kevin and a lot of the organizations down there are doing are great. They're putting out videos. They're using social media. Uh, to get the word out. The Here We Buy campaign has, was, has been really successful and keep doing all those things. But really, uh, I think what the Sacramento fans need to understand is it's somewhat out of their hands at this point. It's going to take Kevin Johnson coming up with this ownership group and getting all these pieces in place before the NBA Board of Governors uh, meeting. We had a similar situation in Seattle where Steve Ballmer and a group came forth uh, about this time in 2008 and uh, you know we went they couldn't go to the NBA Board of Governors meeting because basically as Chris Daniels will tell me I, I tell you after his contentious talk with David Stern that year is that there wasn't a plan uh, there wasn't a concrete plan and in order for this to even have a chance of keeping the team in Sacramento all these things that Kevin Johnson laid out need to happen and there's very little the fans can do unless the fans a billionaire to to step in here okay Jason Reed Kevin Phipp and Chris Daniels thanks all three of you for being with us and you can keep the conversation going on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash OTL. You can follow me on Twitter at TJ Quinn ESPN. Download the podcast at ESPN.com. You can subscribe for free in iTunes. Stay tuned. We have more ahead. Braves, the Milwaukee Braves, the Philadelphia A's, the Kansas City A's, the Oakland Raiders, the Los Angeles Raiders, they can all tell you. A team is a civic trust until the day it packs up forwards its mail, and then it's business. In Seattle, they learned the lesson five years ago when the Sonics went to Oklahoma City. And in Sacramento, they're learning it now. The current owners, the Maloofs, have an agreement to sell the Kings to a Seattle group, while Sacramento officials are trying to gather investors for a bid led by NBA All-Star turned mayor Kevin Johnson. The NBA's Board of Governors is expected to vote April 18th. Whatever criteria the board uses, it won't be sentiment, as Commissioner David Stern said last week in a press conference. So is this strictly about the arena deal, in your mind, that makes it's, Seattle so attractive? This is strictly about what the owners decide. There's a great and strong application from a terrific city uh, to bring in a third and possibly a fourth team in a brand. Seattle and Sacramento make their pitches, a franchise hangs in the balance, and Kevin Johnson's here to talk about it. Today's Outside the Lines. Sitting in for Bob Lee, T.J. Quinn. Ask fans of the Brooklyn Dodgers, the New York baseball giants, the Baltimore Colts, the Boston. Outside the line starts right now. There was a basketball team in Seattle once. They left. Doing a reverse Grapes of Wrath, the Sonics abandoned the West Coast for Oklahoma and became the Thunder. In Sacramento, they have a team. The owners decided to sell, and now some fairly wealthy people in Seattle are ready to bring the Kings there, while Sacramento officials scramble to find their own fairly wealthy people to keep the team put. The point man for that scramble has some experience at the position. Former All-Star Kevin Johnson, point guard, is now the Honorable Kevin Johnson, mayor of Sacramento. He's lobbying to keep his hometown in the big leagues. I will tell you, the eyes of the NBA are watching us. We're the only team not in the playoffs that people are watching as if we are in the playoffs. This was our playoffs. In Anaheim, we won. 